Welcome everybody, welcome to Not Just For Boys. I am your host today, I'm Emma Tomplin, I'm the collaboration partner at Quaratig, and I always say I have the best job there. I'm, I'm lucky enough to manage a number of really great projects, networks and events, such as Not Just For Boys. I help to support girls and women to reach their full potential, and I work closely with businesses in Wales to help them create flexible and inclusive workplaces that support the development and progression of women. My role would usually take me all across the country and beyond and there's loads and loads of fun and I get to re meet really awesome women every day, just like the ones that you will be hearing from very shortly. So before we get started, I just want to do a couple of technical checks with you, talk you through the system, how it's going to work. Um, so go to webinar. I'm not sure if you've used it before. It's quite simple to use. Um, on the right hand side of your screen you will see a little orangey red button with a white arrow inside if you press that it will expand the toolbar for you um, and on there there's some great um, ways for us to interact today the, um, there's a questions tab if you want to ask any questions during the session which we absolutely um, encourage please send in your question on the, the question tab and we will answer those questions at the end um, any questions around you know any technical issues please send them over and i'll answer those as soon as i can um, we've also got the chat function as well. If you want to um, send a message to anybody, you can do so on there. Um, and we will be firing up some polls for you as well. We will be doing some interactive polls to get your views on a couple of um, couple of things that we want to talk about. Um, so it's a great tool for us to use today. Um, we will be recording today's session, and um, Alexia, my colleague, has just put into the chat uh, the chat box that we will be putting a, a video of the recording onto YouTube as well. I will send you a link afterwards so that you can watch this back as many times as you want to. Okay. So I'll just check for any questions to see if any of you are having any technical difficulties. No sound at the moment. Hugh Smith. Um, Okay, I will get back to Hugh. Oh, Alexia, maybe if you could have a look into that while I move on, that would be fab, thank you. Okay. So welcome to Quaratig, not just for boys. Uh, we, we have recently moved these online. They provide free one hour webinars for girls interested in science, in careers within science, technology, engineering, and maths. So these sessions, um, in a normal environment, they would usually run during live events, which take place at an employer's place of work, providing girls with a day in the life experience of what it is like to work there, uh, showcasing rewarding careers in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and maths. And these events usually feature really awesome female role models and have lots of tri trade activities for you to have a go at. They're really fun events, and we hope to bring these back as soon as we can but in the meantime, we have decided to move these online um, until it's safe for us to return face to face. The photo on your screens now is actually a photo that was taken back last year. Um, we ran a women in aviation special event with British Airways Maintenance Centre up at Cardiff Airport. They actually repair British Airways um, planes up there, which is fantastic. So on the day, there was lots of um, industries from aviation exhibiting. They had lots of tri-trade activities. The girls got to have a tour of the hangar. Um, as you can see at the background there, there is actually um, a, a plane propeller, which was yeah, really incredible. Girls absolutely loved it. So for those who haven't joined us at any live events as yet, then please um, please join us you know, for future events. Fingers crossed next year, we'll be able to revert back to um, the usual format and we'd love for you to join us. The webinars that we've been running, they're a fun and interactive way of helping to keep you inspired and motivated, particularly during these really challenging times. Uh, whilst showcasing rewarding careers within the STEM industries and also to let you know that these, these jobs are not just for the boys and that your career choices are not limited because of your gender. So I have a couple of polls that I would like to do with you uh, just to find out a couple, of, uh, a couple of questions. Okay, I'll just fire up the first poll. I just want to find out what region of Wales are you from? So I'll give you a couple of seconds to fill that out. If you could use the the buttons on the toolbar, fantastic. Lots of people from South Wales, lots of people from North Wales as well, fantastic. Okay.
fantastic. Okay, it was great to see where you're from today. So we've got 86 percent in South Wales, 14 percent up in North Wales. There's work to be done in reaching the rest of Wales by the looks of it. So thank you. Okay. So now I were there's another poll coming your way. Are you thinking of going into a STEM career? Yes or no? Let's see if you're already thinking about the career in STEM. Okay. Oh. So 59% are saying yes, 43% no, it's almost 50-50. Oh, it's almost 50-50 now. It's gone 55%, 48, 48 no. It is almost 50-50, which is um, really interesting. So I'm hoping by the end of the session, we will get you all converted to 100% yes. And then the last poll I have for you, do you feel it is important to see female role models, models in STEM? Yes or no? How important are female role models to you? 100% yes so far? Absolutely, couldn't agree more. Oh, we've got a couple of no's. This is basically why we run Not Just For Boys, so that we can highlight the incredible female role models that do work in STEM roles, that can inspire the next generation to think about these as uh, potential career opportunities. So it's great to see so many of you, yes, saying yes, you, you feel it is important to have female role models. So thank you for taking part in those polls. I will move on. Okay, so we have five awesome women working at Welsh Water joining us today. I'm really pleased that they could make it. Um, they're going to give a brief introduction of who they are and their role. Um, and then we'll hear a bit more about their stories a little bit later. Okay, so I'm coming to you, Leanne, first, if you just want to give a brief introduction to who you are and what you do. I'm a programme at Welsh Water, um, and that means I'm in charge of all of the IT projects that we deliver. Hi everyone, my name's Ellie Hannigan Pop, and I'm the organisational change lead um, in Welsh Water, and that actually means that I work on a lot of technology projects, bringing them down to our colleagues and helping them to be able to use them. Thank you, Ellie. Sarah? Hi, all. Um, I'm Sarah Rees. So I'm the Wastewater Programme Performance Manager for the Capital Delivery Area within Welsh Water. Um, the Capital Delivery Area is mainly the construction side of the business uh, where we create new assets or repair existing assets. Um, in terms of assets, to most of you, these are things that um, are of value to you. So things like your phones, your houses, your cars, your laptops, things like that. Thank you, Sarah. Good morning, all. Uh, I'm Thayamal Suri Narainan. I work as solution architect for Welsh Water. Within my role, I have to provide uh, solution options for the business problems, which also equally aligns to our enterprise vision. So that's that's my day-to-day -day job. Thank you. Thank you, Thayamal. Kilian. Hi, I'm Kilian. I'm the Energy Optimization Analyst. So my role is uh, um, analysing our energy data and trying to make our sites more optimum with our energy usage. Brilliant. Thank you. We're going to hear a little bit more from our speakers very soon about their career journeys. Um, unfortunately, we, we've got a bit of a technical issue with our webcam today, so you're not going to be able to see any of us. But Hopefully the slides will be engaging enough um, to, to, to keep you going. Um, and yes, if you have any questions for any of our speakers throughout the day, then please pop them in the questions tab and we will answer those at the end of the, the career talks. OK, so Quaratig, who are we at Quaratig? So we are the leading gender equality charity here in Wales. And since 1992, we have been working to ensure women can enter the workplace, develop skills and build rewarding careers. We have a vision of a Wales where every woman and girl is treated equally and is fully able to participate in the economy and in public and political life and live safe from violence and fear. We offer a number of services at Quartier that can help support girls, women and businesses across the country. And we also work closely with decision makers and government in Wales to ensure that our country is fair and inclusive for women and to ensure that they have a platform for their voices to be heard. We now have a couple more polls for you to take part in. Oh, 
Hang on. Well, hang on. Actually, I believe that we've actually done all the polls for today, so please ignore that. Um, and now I'm going to come to Leanne, our first speaker for today. Leanne, over to you. And again, if you have any questions, then please pop them into the, the questions tab. Thanks, Emma. So um, I thought I'd start off by um, giving you a little bit of background to Welsh Water as an organisation. Um, essentially, we're a uh, not-for-profit company and we've uh, been at that status since 2001. Um, Emma, if you go to the next slide, please. Uh, Not-for-profit essentially means that Welsh Water doesn't have any shareholders, so any financial surpluses are reinvested into the business for the benefit of our customers. We serve 1.4 million homes and business, so that's 3 million people. And although we're called Welsh Water, actually we only serve most of Wales, not all of it. And we also serve some parts of um, England in terms of Herefordshire and some parts of uh, Deeside. And across our patch, we, um, we deliver 828 million litres of water every day. Uh, we're currently the fifth largest company in Wales. And there's approximately uh, 3,000 employees that work for um, Welsh Water um, across Wales. And um, on an average basis, we have an investment programme every five years. And um, generally, we invest about 1.5 billion into our assets that Sarah touched on uh, recently over each five year period. I could give you lots of additional numbers, 26,500 water mains, 30,000 kilometres of sewers, 800 wastewater treatment works, but all of that's on our website if you're interested in um, some of the detail. We also try and invest back into our community. So we've got some reservoir sites and visitor centres that we get over a million visitors to each year. And we've also got educational centres um, where we get about 164,000 children from schools across Wales um, to come and learn more about our organisation. Thanks, Em. So to talk a little bit about um, me and um, uh, my career. So um, I am from uh, Merthyr Tydfil in South Wales Valleys. Um, I went to a school called uh, Penadre High School where I, I sort of did all my GCSEs and A-levels. I was first started thinking about um, maths as a subject to follow um, in that school where um, I had a female maths teacher that, that encouraged me and it was where I got my first access to a computer which at the time was a BBC Acorn which most of you guys have probably never heard of now. After that at school um, I went on to um, Cardiff University. Emma asked us to on touch on some um, uh, challenges that we found in our career so for me um, my last two years of university were a challenge because my mum got very ill and I think um, tradition in, in certainly in my community was that um, the females in the family were seen as carers so that was quite a struggle for me whereas I had felt like I was being um, expected to be the carer for my mum, whereas my brother wasn't. So that was the first obstacle we had to get over. When I finished um, university, um, I joined the construction um, industry. Uh, so for any of you that know Merthyr Tidville, there's a large ASDA um, right at the top of Dowless Top. And I was that was my first project working on that on the construction. And there was over 250 people on site. There was one female I remember that was a painter and decorator. There was one secretary. There was two little girls that worked in the canteen and there was me. And I was in charge of the IT for that site. So we were very much outnumbered, that's for sure. From that point, so I spent 10 years doing that and I got some awesome opportunities to work um, across all different locations across the UK. And then I w went into um, software development. So I spent five years managing teams of uh, developers. Again, mostly male dominated, um, very competitive industry. And sort of the second obstacle we had to come, I came across was that when you have childcare commitments, I've got two children, we're 11 and seven now. Um, there are certainly, there are certainly men um, who will uh, work the sort of 12, 15 hour days. Whereas as a female, again, expected to be the carer more often than not, then you don't have the ability. So um, you certainly have to work smarter, but not necessarily harder. And then after software development, I moved into IT in uh, Welsh Water. I've been here for um, uh, nine years. Um, by this point in my career, I was sort of 
I was an experienced IT project manager and much more um, confident. Um, however, when the head of program role came up, for some reason, I didn't have the confidence to apply. And still, even though I've, I've looked back and wondered why, I don't know, straight after that role, uh, my boss at the time came and asked me why, and I couldn't give him an answer. Two years later, that role came back up. I did apply, and that's where I've been in the, in the position ever since. Next slide, please, Em. So the most surprising thing about working in um, a, a STEM role is that actually your gender doesn't matter if you're good at your job. I, I, it, it, if we get more women in the industry, I think it will definitely um, encourage more again to follow. Um, it's not; it's a competitive industry, but it's also um, an industry where you are well respected for your talents and for your skills. Um, my role's changed, certainly, in terms of how we deliver IT projects since the COVID-19 impact. Um, we had a, a two-year business change plan just before COVID hit to uh, transform some of the technology in our business um, um, to allow some of our colleagues to have smarter ways of working, like working from home, et cetera. And when COVID hit, we had to deliver that two-year program in, in, in two weeks. So we, we completely had to transform a way of delivering technology very, very quickly. Um, and it, but it was, a, it was a busy time, but it was also really exciting. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, I deal with my sort of internal colleagues who are my customers. So I deliver technology to help them with their day to day roles. So I deal with those um, customers. I deal with any escalations where things are going wrong. I develop strategies for the future. So how are we going to be delivering technology in the next five years? How will it change? How it can it be more efficient? Um, and the most rewarding thing about my job is the development of people. So I get a, a get, I get, and of course project delivery, I get a real buzz when we get a project going live and we see the fruits of our labor, but I get a real buzz out of seeing people joining the organization and then working their way up um, uh, through, the, through the ranks. Next slide, please. Em. So Emma's asked us to share our sort of um, top tips um, to achieving a STEM career. So um, the first thing I'd say is um, don't take the theory for granted. So um, when studying, um, I think understanding a concept rather than memorizing it is definitely going to be your best way to go. In the work scenario, it's the same applies. Um, and I'll always make an attempt to understand why decisions are being made rather than what decisions are being made. It will certainly help you on your development. Um, take the initiative. Um, don't wait for opportunities to come. The, you, you need to create some opportunities yourself. So by opportunities, I mean join webinars like this one. There are lots of networking of meetups for different areas of um, of our industry. And there are free programs out there like Girls Who Code. So don't shy away from something just because, you know, it, you might think oh, that's, a, that's a little bit too much work um, or because you're just a bit unsure about whether it's going to work for you. Just give it a shot because you've got nothing to lose. Uh, my third one is, is ask for help. Asking for help is a strength, certainly not a weakness. If you don't ask, you could be missing out on lots of information that others have. Um, and what you will find is when you start asking for help, there are lots of people out there who like to see people develop like myself. And so they're happy to share and happy to help you on your development path. And don't be shy about seeking out mentors. If there's someone you respect, then ask them if they don't mind being a mentor and if they could give you some of their time to just talk through where you want to get to and how you can get there. Um, I would say my fourth is work hard and be visible. So you, you can work, you might have heard the saying, you've got to work twice as hard to get half as far. There's some truth in that. You have to shout about your achievements twice as loud, I would say. So um, use any um, social media or professional social media like LinkedIn and any local channels um, such as local meetups to just shout about your successes. Make sure people know you're there and you, that you're not hiding hiding your talents. And my, my final tip would be don't be afraid of failure. Some things that you try just won't work. You might try a networking meetup or you might try 
you know, something like Girls Who Code, and you just don't feel like it, it, it fits you, that's fine. Um, there's going to be people out there that won't support you, and there's going to be people out there that won't accept you in the roles you're trying to achieve. But don't worry about it. Dust yourself off. Move on. You can learn much more than failure than um, getting something right first time. Um, so that's that's it for me. I hope that was helpful. Thank you, Leanne. That's really, really great advice. And um, yeah, you know, absolutely create your own opportunities. A very wise woman once told me that you have to create your own reality. Um, and it's, you know, it all lies in your hands. So yeah, absolutely look for those opportunities and create them yourself as well. So I absolutely agree with that. They're really great advice. And particularly, you know, don't be afraid of failure. It's the only way that we learn and, and grow and develop as well. And if something isn't right for you the first time, don't be afraid to change as well. I think what's so great about STEM careers is that it's always changing and you can change the roles that you go into as well so fantastic thank you so much for that Leanne um, if you have any questions for Leanne please pop them in the, the, the questions facility and we will answer them um, at the end so I'm now going to move on to our next speaker Ellie thanks Emma um, yeah just on your last point just don't be afraid of change I mean I'll mention that now in my presentation but actually that's a really good point to highlight really um, my role um, at Welsh Water is um, that I'm a change lead um, so I actually manage a lot of the changes that are brought in when we bring kind of new technology to colleagues um, most recently for example that's been bringing tablets and a new system to our operational workforce so they can work more mobile which has been really helpful during the current situation while we've got COVID going on and social distancing. Um, and I, I try to help people understand what changes are coming so that they can actually use that new technology. But um, that's a little bit different to kind of what I originally started up doing. Um, so originally I started out studying geography um, at the University of South Wales at the time called the University of Glamorgan. Um, and kind of this, this is kind of um, quite different from what I do now. Um, but there's some lot, lots of things I took from that and, and where I started out that I've actually took through all of my career really. So for me, having a STEM subject and studying that has probably been the best thing that I could have personally done for myself. And I didn't realise that at the time. It gave me lots of um, skills such as um, teamwork skills, analytical skills, um, the confidence to kind of do lots of different things bits of research and, and just trying things really um, and then that actually helped me kind of go into my graduate role that I got something that I really recommend if you see any opportunities like this um, if you do decide to go on to further education and you see anything like that it just gives you um, quite quite a, a variety of skills and, and experiences um, I basically got to do a bit of everything really when I when I had my graduate role it's a 12 month placement um, and I did everything from things such as surveying um, a site of special scientific interest, um, studying, looking at trees. And then I also did some other work working with local communities and helping them use their local outdoor spaces. And what I found from that is that I actually like working with people. Um, I like getting people to think differently. Um, and I like kind of trying to encourage them to think about what can be beneficial for themselves and what new skills they can do. So out of that, then I actually um, decided that I quite like project delivery. I like working on lots of different bits and bobs. I, I quite like change. Um, so I actually took up quite a few different roles in the third sector. So in different charities, popped a few on this. You can see I mainly worked for the Ramblers, but I worked with the National Trust. I worked with the Duke of Edinburgh Award and the Canal and River Trust. And what that meant was I worked on lots of projects doing lots of little bits. I did um, a lots of things in IT um, from encouraging people to use apps to go out in the outdoors and survey footpaths. Um, I also encouraged people in the D Duke of Edinburgh Award and um, lots of young people to, to volunteer with their charities. Um, and I did a lot of things such as um, radio interviews. I worked with Welsh Government to encourage them to to be more active and their colleagues to be able to do things such as step camps. So that was that was really interesting. But what I did realize is that I loved doing all these different things, but where was it really going to take me? So I decided projects. That's great. I really enjoy projects. So I actually decided I'm going to go into project management. So I moved into Public Health Wales. I did some project support and I also looked at data management. But actually what I found was 
in these projects, lots of people didn't really like change. So, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, I got a sore throat. Maybe hopefully that sounds a little bit better. Um, so actually from that, I realised I like change management. Um, I like working with people. I use some of those skills that I used on all those previous projects. And I started to work for Welsh Water, which is great. Um, it's still, it was a third sector. Um, sorry, not a third sector, not for profit. I really like working in the third sector. So that was really great. Um, and actually what I found was, you can kind of see there, I did lots of different things. And it actually doesn't matter if you take a STEM subject, you can actually move through that and do any roles you'd like. Um, and could you go on to the next one, please? Oh, there we are. So what I did find while I was working um, in a step, in kind of a STEM career really was having a role model was great. So um, for me, as you can see that picture there, my grandmother was a great role model role model she's irish um and actually at the time while she was married she wasn't actually able to work um quite a different to the society we're in now but actually um she actually didn't tell anybody that she was married so that she could work and she actually became head teacher of a school um, and i was really kind of taken by that it really kind of made me think actually you know what i can i can do whatever i really want really as long as i put my mind to it <clears throat> Sorry about my voice. So actually, you know, having a role model, it might be something that you might like to consider. Think about who means something to you. Um, it might not be one person, but I thought I would just pick one person for today. Um, but also, surprisingly, STEM can be quite creative as well. So what I have found is, you know, yes, you need to use your analytical skills. You might be really good at looking at data, but you also might need to problem solve. And um, that's definitely something I've come across. And um, I've definitely had to think outside the box at times. For example, most recently with COVID-19, um, we were delivering some training <clears throat> and this was classroom training. And what I actually found was, um, you know, what can we do with that social distancing that we've got at the moment? And just like we're doing today, we had to move that online, we had to use Teams and we had to do something that was socially distant. So um, there's definitely, if you've got lots of ideas and you're really creative, you know, don't be put off going for something like a STEM subject. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, STEM can be a whole range of things as I've shown in my career there. Um, you know, it doesn't put you into one box. Don't feel like when you're starting out in your career that you really need to know what you're going to be able to do. You can change that um, and you can, you can mix and match all the time, really. So, you know, bear that in mind. Um, and, you know, something that I think is really important is your opinion is just as valid as others. So don't be daunted um, by the fact that you might have a little bit of perhaps imposter syndrome where you're questioning yourself. Um, actually, when you start to share your opinions, Lots of people actually um, do listen. Um, often I would feel like um, people are older than me, they know a lot more than me. Um, you know, certainly, you know, working a lot in a male dominated environment, sometimes that can be intimidating, but actually, as soon as you use your voice, people do listen, they do really want to listen to you. Um, so, so once you start doing that a few times, you'll actually find it, it actually becomes a lot easier. <clears throat> Thanks Emma, if you could go to the last one. So um, just to kind of give you some of the top tips that I had kind of thought about um, while I was trying to put this presentation together, really, and what I've kind of experienced during my career. So um, one of the main things that people used to ask me all the time was, what do I want to do when I'm older? Um, I wouldn't worry if you don't know what you want to do now. Um, STEM subjects really do give you lots of different skills and opportunities. So, you know, pick something you enjoy, pick something that you think you're good at um, and take it from there, really. Take lots of opportunities as they come along. Um, something else I always used to think was, can I really do that? Can I really get involved in that? You know, um, find someone perhaps who you can use as your mentor that can give you some feedback. Um, someone that perhaps you look, look, look up to. 
um, they can help you think outside the box and think uh, think wider than what's kind of perhaps in your head and what you think of yourself. And certainly for me, that it helps when people have kind of given me some insight into how they perceive me and actually makes me realise that I can actually do a lot more than I actually thought I could. And um, so I'd certainly recommend thinking about that. And, you know, how I think about those role models that you've got. Is it someone that you know that you can perhaps speak to? You might be able to give some really good advice. Um, and then often I always used to think I put a lovely presentation together, perhaps, and then I presented it to everybody. Um, and actually, once it was up on that screen, I thought, oh, my gosh, that isn't really what I wanted. That wasn't how I wanted it to look. It didn't come across the way that, that I thought it was going to. And I think from that, I think you have to realise that no, no one is perfect. And actually, you don't always get things right the first time. And actually, that's OK as long as you're working to the best of your ability, uh, people will always appreciate that. <clears throat> and, and then finally, really, is I always have often thought in the past that I wish I'd said something because often someone else has come out with it five minutes later. So don't be afraid to speak up and use your voice. Um, let people know who you are. Um, and you don't have to know everything. Most people don't know everything. As long as you're genuine, genuine and you're you, then people will really respect that. And that's, that's the end. Thank you. Thanks, Ellie. That's really great advice there. And you know, the, absolutely echo what you say about finding a mentor. Mentoring is so important. And if anybody listening today is really interested in, in finding a mentor to help them with um, their career plans, then please just get in touch with Quartig and I'm sure you know, we can help steer, steer you in the right direction. Um, and you know what, what you said about role models as well. This is this is kind of, you know the whole point of why we've come up with not just for boys is to showcase those amazing role models in STEM. And so you can hear the career journeys of those women working in STEM and how they've got there, and guarantee that the um, the sort of challenges that you are facing, they've already faced them and they've overcome those challenges. So just you know listen listen to those talks, tune in, find yourself a mentor, look for those role models as well. They are absolutely there. Um, and again, yeah, you know, championing what you said about wishing you, you'd asked that question. There's no such thing as a, as a wrong question or a silly question and guarantee that um, somebody else in the room is thinking the exact same thing. So just don't be afraid to just use your voice and ask. So we're now going to move over to Sarah. Hi, all. Um, so I'm Sarah Rees. Um, I am the Wastewater Programme Performance Manager um, and I work in capital delivery. So that's an area of Welsh water that mainly focuses on the construction side. So we tend to build um, new assets or maybe do some repair work to existing assets that Welsh water owns. Um, as I touched on, assets is mainly just things that Welsh water owns that are of value to them. So like to most people, these would be their houses, their cars, like TVs, laptops, anything that they physically own that adds value. Um, so I'll start off by giving you a bit of a background um, of my education and my career. So Em, can you move on to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, so I'm also from Merthyr Tydfil, um, but I went to Cavatha High School where I got my GCSEs and A-levels. Um, technology was one of my one of my favourite subjects. I loved being hands on, loved creating things, using different materials, and later on in my um, school life, using CAD because it was quite new then. <laughs> um, so this is where I decided I wanted to go into engineering because I was quite good at maths. I wasn't amazing, I'll be honest, but I was good, <laughs> um, and I was decent at IT, and I just loved technology. Uh, my grandfather was an electrical engineer, and he always had us making things and creating things. And I thought this is probably the best route for me to go down. Um, so I went to Swansea University where I studied um, a bachelor's of engineering in product design engineering. Um, and from this, I moved into a master's in material science. Um, both my degrees were probably um, very male dominated. I'd probably say there's about 80% male and 20% female. Um, yeah, so I think when I did the product design technology um, degree, um, there was areas of that, that I found interesting, specifically materials, which is why I went on to do a master's. I kind of wanted to broaden my knowledge and that side of things. Um, after university, I worked for a company called Nordam. They're a repair and manufacturing company that work on aeroplane engines. Um, in this role, I worked as an industrial engineer. So predominantly, my tasks were to do reverse engineering, so looking at how we could make things um, in-house. 
looking at KPIs, so key performance indicators, and doing improvement projects. So the key things in most industries are time, cost, and quality. Um, and my job was to make things quicker, um, better quality, and cheaper, really. This was a very male-dominated industry. Um, it was my first role. I was 22. There was 140 male engineers on the shop floor and two female. Um, I was one of the females. <laughs> um, it was a lot of challenge. It took a while to get respect, um, mainly from being young as well. Um, and the workforce, a lot of them had been there for like 30, 40 years. Um, but the one thing that I can definitely say is you've just got to persevere. You've just got to stand up for yourself and you will get there in the end. Um, after a year there then, I moved into the automotive industry. Um, I worked for a company called Northern Automotive Systems, working with different car manufacturers to produce um, car interiors. So I worked two days a week in Coventry and three days a week in Abergavenny. Um, I had, it was a great job. I had the opportunity to travel across Europe, met all the different car companies like Porsche, Jag, VW, Audi. Um, but again, this was a very male dominated industry. Um, lots of competition, lots of egos. Um, but this is the one role where I really learned to stand up for myself. Um, I was really lucky that I had a very supportive boss. Um, he always heard me out. He always put me forward for things and always asked my opinion in meetings, which kind of got the people's confidence in me then that I knew what I was talking about. Um, so from this, then I moved into Welsh Water. I was an asset projects manager for a little bit, and then I moved into the program performance manager role within Capital. Um, this is also quite male dominated, especially because it's construction. It's, um, there's a lot of male engineers out there. Um, but within Welsh Water, there's a hell of a lot of female engineers as well. So I was really impressed that we've got like surveyors, we've got ecologists, designers, there's construction engineers, electrical, mechanical, uh, we've got quantity surveyors, and they're all women, um, which was really inspiring to see that actually, we are becoming less of the minority and more on a 50-50 playing field. Um, so I do think times are changing. And maybe if I went back to Nordam now, maybe there are more female engineers. Um, I think as the years go on, then, yeah, things are getting a lot better. Um, Emma, can you go to the next slide, please? So what inspired me to get into STEM? Um, I think the biggest thing for me is when I was in university, it was realising that female engineers are the minority. And I didn't ever want girls to feel like they weren't capable of becoming one um, or that they won't be supported and respected because you will be. And there are loads of female engineers out there and loads of, loads of people that have the capability to become them. Um, it is tough in some industries, but it is changing quickly. And I think you've just got to stand tall and show them that you know exactly what you're talking about. Um, and to be fair, with any company, you'll be fresh eyes, which is fantastic. Every company is looking for fresh eyes to get new ideas. Um, so you will be great assets to any company. Um, role models. So I know there's a picture of Albert Einstein on the <laughs> on the presentation, but the first role model for me was my mother. Um, she's a strong, hardworking woman and she worked in dentistry, um, which at the time was, again, very male dominated. But she still managed to do it all, um, bring up me and my sister. And we're both you know, well educated, strong, independent women. Um, I don't think you have to have a female role model. Um, for me, a role model is just somebody that you respect and look up to regardless of whether whether they're male or female. Um, a role, role model as I got older was probably Albert Einstein. And this is mainly just because he wasn't a fly, a high flying educated man. Um, he used to work in a painting office until he was about 30 and then changed the field of physics for everybody. Um, not everybody reaches their highest potential straight out of school. You know, you've got your whole life ahead of you to get to where you want to be. You don't have to rush everything. So one of my favorite quotes by him is a person who never made a mistake, never tried anything. So sometimes you just got to go for it. If it doesn't work, then at least you've learned from it. And if it does work, then it's going to be incredible. Um, and the most rewarding thing about my job. So the biggest thing is probably seeing the difference that we make. So we've got a project um, in Tlesley where the majority of Tlesley used to flood every time there was really bad rain. We've spent millions of pounds working within the town centre and in the latest awful batch of weather where there was like flooding all across the UK, Tlesley didn't flood. So we saved all those houses from flood damage, which they've been experiencing for years. So it's the little things like that that end up being the most rewarding. And then the last slide, please, Em. So these are my um, top five tips. So the one of them is just 
be honest. If you aren't sure of something, then be honest about it. Just ask and tell people. People will believe you and listen to your opinions and give you opportunities if you're honest. As soon as you lie and get caught out, you can lose. People can lose respect really quickly. Um, second one then is don't wait for opportunities. I know the others have touched on this, but yeah, don't sit back and expect opportunities to come your way. You need to be proactive. You need to be expanding your learning. I don't mean go on every single course you can find, but you know, don't hesitate if there's one you like just go on it um even these days you can watch youtube videos to learn things they don't necessarily have to be courses um all those little things will just make you a better individual um another tip is ask for help so don't be afraid to ask for help everybody has to start somewhere nobody knows everything about everything even though there's some people that think they do um the more you ask the more you learn there's never a stupid question what might be stupid to some people is the best question ever to others like every successful person at some point has asked a question that other people might have thought was stupid but without them asking that question they would never have known the answer um another one is speak up so if you've got a question or if you've got a statement or a comment that you want to make then don't just say it in your head or after the meeting or after the event tell somebody else you've got to have that confidence to speak up it'll help you stand out and to be seen by others as well you should never be afraid if it gets rejected or somebody doesn't listen to you there's no such thing as failure it's just only learning experiences and the last one is the biggest one for me is just believe in yourself you know sometimes there'll be situations where you don't think the jobs can be right for you i know that um leanne touched on it as well but this is where you need to believe in the knowledge that you've got, the experiences that you've had and the ability that you've got to deliver. You know, you didn't get that far doing nothing. So you can do whatever you set your mind to. And it doesn't matter whether you're fail or male or female. What matters is the job gets to be done. And that's it. Thanks, Em. Sorry, I couldn't get my, my mute to come off then. Um, thank you so much for that really great, um, interesting talk and the advice as well. It's just so valuable. And, you know, particularly what you mentioned about not knowing what you want to do yet. You know, we are still young. You're still all young and, and you know, in school and not quite sure where, what route you, you're headed for yet. And absolutely just keep trying things and see what works out for you. And you know, eventually you will end up in a career that is perfect for you. Um, trust me, I actually, um, I was very much like that when I was in school. I didn't have an idea what I wanted to do throughout school or when I left school. I just tried lots of different things and eventually ended up in Quaratig and here I am um, almost 10 years later. So yeah, absolutely just try everything and, and you know, do things that you like and enjoy. So really valuable advice. Um, we're now going to come to our next speaker, which is Thayamal. Thayamal, over to you. Hello. Thanks, Emma. <clears throat> uh, I work as a solution architect, as I said before. Uh, if, Emma, if you could move to the next slide, please. Um, I come from a so small town in India named Tutukudi. I'm not sure if anybody has heard about the small town. It is a port, uh, port city and um, it is famous for its pearls as well. And I've been living in Wales for more than 15 years and uh, I have completed my Bachelor of Engineering in Computer Science. Initially, when I was doing my GCSEs, I was uh, interested more in uh, Max and computer science. Um, and slowly, my interest towards computer science was going, growing uh, rapidly, uh, is what I could see. Um, it all started when I joined a course to do computer science back in those days. Uh, and I saw the interest in me growing for towards computer science more and more day to day. So that which inspired me to take in A-levels computer science as one of my uh, main subjects. And later I did uh, have a career in engineering in computer science as well. Um, the person who inspired me the most is my father. He always motiva motivated me to do the best in what I, what I do always. Back in those days um, in my town, in order to take a career uh, in uh, engineering, it was called as men's career and not as a women career in any which way. And uh, if I do need to do an engineering, I have to go out of town and I have to stay somewhere else in order to study. Those were all very big things in order to break the ice, in order to do it also. 
but my father always supported me to take the passion that what i really liked so he was always with me in order to do it i'm the first women engineer in my family and after that i had uh, many people who followed within my family to become women engineers having said that i have three sisters who are all engineers today who have all taken computer science as one of their uh, main subjects in their career so the that speaks a lot is what i would say and um i have uh, 10 years of experience in utility industries i started off uh, as a business lead and then I I grow my career into a business analyst and then I I am today working as a solution architect. Uh, um, initially I joined Wales and West Utilities where I was working mainly as a business lead. Then within Welsh Water, I, I grow my career as a business analyst then to a solution architect. If you could move to the next slide, Emma, please. So uh the role model that who i always uh, uh, get inspired and motivated will be um, indra nui the main reason is she reminds me of my mother so as uh, one of the stories what indra nui told in were uh, in uh, one of the co conversation that i have seen uh, is she got the ceo award and her mom said that, and she wants to go back to home and she wants to tell her mother to say that you know what mom i have been appointed as a ceo but her mother reminded her to say that yes let it be i don't want to listen your story now i just want to make uh, remind you that milk is not in the fridge today can you please go and get it so she has to go back she has to go the get the milk and then keep it on the fridge and then only she was allowed to say that what she has achieved on that day so she my mom also reminds me the same thing i could be uh, she always reminds me to say that yes you have to be good in your career but equally you are a mom so once you are stepping into your home make sure that you are remembering you are having a multiple hat and make sure that you are you you have different duties once you step into your home and make sure that like um, you remind your daughter that she has to put the shoes in the right place and she, has she folded her clothes has she had her food these becomes your priority as soon as you step into your home so these are some of the wordings that what indra nui has already said which got inspired me even further in terms of career perspective whatever you do throw yourself into it throw your head heart and hand into it and remain a lifelong student and don't lose that curiosity and an important attribute of success is to be yourself is never hide what makes you so just be yourself if you could move to the next one please emma yeah what is the most surprising th thing to be as part of a sam career passion commitment and capabilities defines you and not your gender so make sure that is that is a very good thing like how lian mentioned earlier that is the same thing what other girls also mentioned so we are able to make a career on our own and that is something that stem can provide another thing is we are all paid for learning after choosing this career so how am i thinking about that like how uh, Indra Noe said earlier, it is not like once we have finished our GCSE, we have stopped studying. We are, once we have finished our A levels, we have stopped studying. We are a lifelong learner, and this role provides that opportunity. And once you are getting into a career, you are being paid as well in order to learn, which is a really good thing. And I always enjoy that element. And what is the most rewarding thing is there is always something to learn that always keeps me happy um what, what, every single day i feel like okay i've learned this today i don't know um if there is nothing there to learn then probably i'll get very bored and i don't think i'll go go back to the office the next day but the drive of learning new things always kept me to enjoy what i'm doing and most of the job in my day-to-day -day job i have to solve business problems and recommend solution the logical thinking behind it it is never the same every every time it is different and i enjoy uh, that which increases my passion also and meeting customer expectations so i make a uh, many people happy 
by doing what I'm doing. So which also keeps my uh, energy and spirits in the positive way. If we could move to the next slide, please, Emma. So what are the five tips? Uh, I, I might be having few things there, what my colleagues have already said, but one of the main thing is dreaming big. So no, no matter, don't, don't be afraid to dream. Always uh, dream bigger. It is just a dream. It is not going to hurt us. Always uh, try to dream big and believe in them. So it is always like uh, there is a saying to say that uh, um, whatever we think we become, but we have to think first and any opportunities that comes in our doorway, make sure that we grab it. Uh, don't take things for granted and make sure that we are dreaming and what we are dream, we will always uh, become and be persistent and consistent. We have to be persistent in order to get it. In order to own it, we have to be consistent. So that is that is very beautiful. Um, and be bold, like how everybody said, if you have something to say, always don't shy away. Always stick to what you wanted and don't feel that you have to say something just to because somebody feels so. Always be yourself and the doors will open only to the people who will knock it. So we have to make a step. We have to try it and see there is nothing wrong in trying and find support and be supportive. As like how all other colleagues said, it could be a male dominated uh, place where, where we are working, but we all, we all know that it is going to be hard, but we being women ourselves, if we know that other women is struggling, make sure that give, give a hand to them, be supportive to them, and we make sure that when we want also support, we can go back to them. It is not that since you helped, you have to help me back, but we are building a community between ourselves, which will get stronger and stronger day to day and never give up. That is something like a motto for me. I can't give up and never stop trying. You might fail, but give it another try. Always uh, don't shy away, shy away from that. So yeah, that's it really, Emma. Thank you so much, Saimal. That was such a really inspiring um, story from you and fantastic to hear that you and your other sisters are also engineers as well. That's amazing. You've got a, a family of engineers there to inspire lots of other fantastic women so thank you for being so honest and and you know your advice is just so important as well never hide yourself you know everybody's unique and that's your selling point you are you and nobody else is like you and use that to your advantage as well and be your authentic self and yeah come agree more about being supportive and finding support build your own support network around you your network of contacts your network of, of women that will support you throughout your career journeys as well and and you know as i mentioned before um find yourself a mentor so important so thank you very much if you have any questions for our speakers please pop them in the chat box we will be um we will be asking those very shortly I'm now going to move over to our last, but not and by no means least, speaker, Kilian. Over to you. Hi, thank you, Emma. So, yeah, I'm Kilian Kerr. I am the Energy Optimization Analyst. And Emma, if you could pop onto the next slide for me, that'd be great. So, I come from an island town in the southwest of Northern Ireland called Inniskillen. Um, so, I put a map on because it's probably my most asked question because nobody knows where it is. Um, I grew up being surrounded by rivers and lakes and I was always fascinated by the environment around me so from a really young, young age I always wanted to study geography in school and ideally pursue a career in it. Um, I was naturally drawn to science as I was fascinated by how the body and the world around us worked so when it came to set to my A-levels I chose geography, home economics, chemistry and biology. Um, for me university was something I always wanted to do um, and when it came to choose what I wanted to do I of course um, was done geography but being from such a rural area everyone had the impression that you could only get a job um, through teaching in order to do a geography degree which I knew I didn't want to do and um, so for the advice of my careers teacher I applied to study chemistry in university and um, luckily for me I didn't get my chemistry grades but I smashed my geography and biology exams which meant I went into clearing um, and I got into geography at Queen's University Belfast the university and the course that I wanted to go to from the beginning 
Um, so I began my bachelor's in science and geography and during my dissertation I knew I wanted to pursue my master's in climate change due to my love for discovering and learning more about the planet. So I took a year out to help me save um, and I worked in Starbucks um, and then I continued to work there and I moved across to Norwich. So if you look at England in the south uh, east, just out there is where Norwich is. Um, and then during my time studying my master's, I seen a graduate scheme for Welsh Water, which was working in renewable energy and um, which essentially ticked all the boxes I wanted for my job. So I applied and I started in September 2018. If you could go into the next slide for me, please, Emma, that'd be great. So um, the graduate programme is a two year programme. Um, I started working with the energy team. Uh, um, my first six months of placement was working with the energy projects team, helping to identify potential sites for renewable energy. Um, then I went to work with the energy, energy generation team, which looked at optimising our energy assets and doing carbon accounting for the company. I then moved into my third placement, which is involved running social media and communications for Welsh Water Organic Energy. Um, this is a com our sister company and it looks at recycling food waste through anaerobic digestion. Um, and then now I'm working as an energy optimisation analyst. So I analyse energy data and attend our wastewater sites to try and identify innovative ways of optimising our energy usage and basically just bringing our energy usage down. Um, I absolutely love my job. And I was over the moon when my head of service offered me the position. I began the role on the 16th of March 2020 and that afternoon we were told to work from home indefinitely. Um, even though I work from home currently about 80 percent of the time I'm meant to be about a 50-50 split and um, so I'm meant to be on site sort of for half my week and then working from home the other half um, but yeah no two days are the same for me. Um, I do truly love my job and knowing that I can make a difference to the world around me makes it even more special. Um, so some people um, also have the impression that geography isn't really a STEM subject, which in my opinion isn't the case. Um, during my time studying both my master's and my bachelor's, I covered science related topics, looking at the geomorphology and the chemical and geological makeup of the earth. I looked at engineering scenarios in relation to flood risks and other civil engineering issues. Um, I looked at technology through the use of GIS and mathematics through the utilisation of R and SPSS. So even as a female going to choose a STEM subject, there can be even hurdles created and stigmas attached to which ones you should choose. So I think that's really important to keep in the back of your minds as well. So yeah, one of the questions we got asked as part of the webinar was, who are role models? Um, and for me, it's my mum. Um, she didn't get the opportunities I got at a young age, um, but through her later life, she showed me, as long as you do what you love, that's the ultimate key to happiness and you can achieve anything you want and you shouldn't be put off by your sex, your age or anything else. Um, I've been really blessed and I think other ladies have all touched on this. Um, even though STEM is a male dominated environment that, yeah, we're always listened to. Um, I'm really lucky my managers are the exact same. They're more than happy to listen to what I have to say. So, yeah, I think coming from a background um, from an only girls school I have this image in my head that men were all burly and they wouldn't listen to you and you'd be just pushed aside but that really isn't the case which has been really really good. If you pop on to the next slide for me Emma, thank you. So um, if I could turn back the clocks and give myself the same advice I'm going to give you all today it would be to be open-minded. Um, one perfect example of this for me was my time working at Organic Energy. I had no experience in communications and marketing. And within those six months, I quickly picked up the contacts and skill sets that I needed to fulfill my goals set for the job. But I also had built skills and knowledge that I can even utilize in my role as an optimization analyst. And had I limited myself and stuck to what I, I know, who knows where I would have ended up instead. Um, I believe you should set yourself realistic goals, not just within academia, but also outside. This way, this helps to get you to believe in yourself, which you probably never would have before. And it means you're not afraid to apply for that dream course, that dream job, that dream apprenticeship. Um, the image displayed um, is smart goals. And basically, whatever the goal you're setting yourself, it should follow these five letters. Um, my next bit would be don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, we do have a motto in Welsh Water that there's no thing, such thing as a stupid question. I think questions are really important. I love being asked questions as it makes me think about things in more detail. And it can also help a business team or individual challenge the status quo. And it shows engagement and it's a really useful way to learn. And that also includes asking for help. So never be afraid to ask for help. 
Um, I think you should pursue your passion. I wish I'd taken the leap out of my mum's book and just did what was going to make me happy. And um, when you love what you do, you're doing, you'll naturally be more inspired to reach whatever it is you're trying to achieve, whether it's a degree, apprenticeship, graduate scheme, whatever. And last but not least, do research. I mentioned initially I'd applied to do chemistry because I was debating between forensic science and medical research. And then after speaking with family and friends, I realised forensics might not be for me. The key to knowing if something is for you is doing that type of research, going online, looking at a company's website or their social media, asking to do work experience. And the only way you're going to know if something is for you is asking the questions and doing that research. So, yeah, that's it from me. Thank you so much, Keely. Another another great story for us to consider and fantastic advice, you know, mentioning do what you love. Absolutely. There's um, a famous saying, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And I absolutely believe that. Um, and which links in nicely to, you know, doing your research about what, what roles are out there. And hopefully through the Not Just For Boys initiative, um, Aquaritig, you know, we're able to highlight those careers that perhaps you haven't even heard of. And, you know, there's probably going to be, you'll end up doing jobs that don't even exist yet. So just keep trying things that really inspire you and that you like and do your research. And um, I'm sure you're going to all end up with fantastic careers. So we're now going to move over to some questions from our audience. Um, so I'm just going to uh, pop, um, if our panel members can all pop their mics back on, we're going to um, we're going to take some questions from the audience. I have one question here. Um, wanting to know, what at what age did you know what you wanted to do? So Leanne, I'll come to you first. What age did you you know decide stem is for you um i still don't think i really know what i want to do and i'm 45 now but um i followed the advice that um um some of the other girls have given so i really enjoyed maths in school and i like tinkering about with computers so i didn't really know what i wanted to do but i knew what i'd enjoyed so that led me on to do my maths degree um at that point, I didn't really know what career I wanted to do, but I knew what I didn't want to do. I didn't want to be in one of those traditional female roles where our earning potential was limited. So, you know, things like um, maybe teaching or retail sales or administration and things like that. So I suppose I, I was drawn to male dominated roles just because I was ambitious and wanted to make sure that I, I was earning a good wage for the time that I was spending in work. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm head of program now and I enjoy my job. Is this what I wanted to be? Probably not, but this is where my career has taken me. And I still don't really know where I want to go in the next 10 years, but I'll just follow follow my gut and keep doing what I'm enjoying. I absolutely love that, Leanne, not knowing, you know, it's still not knowing what you want to do. And that's okay because nothing is, is final. Whatever you decide to do, there's always something else you can be doing in the future and something you can be aspiring to do as well. So just remember that whatever you decide to do isn't final and you can change your mind. And you can do different things. And I think that's the whole exciting part of life, really, is just doing different things that you love. Um, so I'll come to um, Sarah. What about you? Did, did you have an idea of what age, you know, you decided STEM was for you? Um, I think similarly to Leanne, really, um, I didn't necessarily have a specific moment. Um, I just knew that I love technology. Um, always started from when I was in my GCSE year. Um, we had a great technology teacher that was really enthusiastic and made us get involved, um, which was perfect because I I'm not somebody that likes to sit there and, you know, read books and books and books. You know, there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm just not that person. I like to be hands on. I like to be getting involved and I loved creating things. Um, so, yeah, that probably started at GCSE age, but at GCSEs, I would never have known that this is where I was going to end up. Um, and again, similarly to Leanne, this isn't necessarily where I want to be for the rest of my life either. This is a great role. And if I have to be you, that's great. But there's so many opportunities out there. Um, and as you said, there's new jobs being created like regularly, like technology is changing, like the work environment is changing. So I think um, there's just plenty of opportunities really. Absolutely, Sarah. The world is forever changing and we're always learning and we'll, and we'll never keep up with technology, but you know, there's going to be new exciting roles out there. And I think just keep, Keep your eyes open and and see what the future brings. Um, what about uh, Thiamel? What about you? Did you know 
of, of our age, were you quite young when you decided STEM was for you? Because I know you come from a family of engineers, so was that always on your radar from a young age? Um, I, I remember the day that uh, I went to my father and I said that I have two options on my table, thinking that what I uh, think I might be good at, and I just want an approval from him to say that which one could be better for me. And one was becoming an auditor like him, Another one was what I liked, which was computer science. He saw me and he said, just follow your passion. But that point in time, what I know, what I said to myself is what I liked to study or what I'm good at and where my passion is, is what I am studying at that particular age. But what uh, in terms of career, not only in that point in time, including now also, what I say to myself is never be a 10 plus 1 in a place don't be an extra or don't be in a place where you are not adding value always try to uh, uh, when you are joining a job that is whatever could be the job is give your full percentage to it and that will take to places we need not run for places the places will come to you so at this point in time, if uh, if you are asking me what will be the good for the girls, it will be like stick to your passion, always uh, try to learn, do your best and make sure what you like you always choose, then you will obviously end up in the place where you want it to go also. I love that. Thank you. Such great advice there. Um, Ellie, what about you? Did you have an idea from a young age of what you wanted to do or are you still learning as, as you go along? Um, certainly not at all. I mean, um, I've done lots of different things as I've gone through the few years since I graduated, but even get into um, that geography uh, degree that I kind of I went for in the end, even then that wasn't an easy decision. I wasn't sure quite what what to pick even at the time. And I think what was really important, it was having some good teachers and, and my mum actually giving me just some advice and thinking about what I liked. And I think that stayed with me the whole time is always pick something that you enjoy, like everyone else had mentioned. I think you really can't go wrong then. And you know, you'll know when you don't like something and perhaps you need to change track and do something else. So I think it's just being not, not too kind of worried about not knowing what you want to do because actually it's okay. I think most people probably don't know what they want to do, but we always get asked that question. What do you want to do? Um, just just go for something that works for you, that, that feels right, really. Absolutely. I think, you know, when you're picking your GCSE subject at such a young age, how how is everybody supposed to know what they want to do? Um, so it's, you know, absolutely. It's OK not to know. And if you still don't know later in life either, that's that's the, the fun part, I think, because there's just so much out there, so many amazing careers. Um, and hopefully we can highlight some of those amazing careers through not just for boys. Um, Kilian, what about you? How how did you sort of get into what sort of age did you think about STEM? Um, so I think I started, I thought about geography from like I was a little tiny kid, so maybe five or six, because I was always obsessed with like the weather and rivers, as I said. Um, for me, though, I don't think I actually knew what I wanted to do, but I knew where I wanted to be. So I knew I wanted to be working with like renewable energy and sort of, you know, clean energy, making an impact in the world. And I think that's the thing that we should start asking ourselves rather than what do we want to do, maybe where we want to be, because I think that's echoed through all of the girls. They knew they wanted to be with Maz or technology, but they just didn't know what they wanted to do. Um, so, yeah, I didn't really know I wanted to do this job until I kind of almost got offered it. And yeah, I absolutely love it. So, yeah. Thank you. I yeah, absolutely agree that we should be looking at it from a different perspective, you know, in terms of industry or where you want to be, as opposed to um, you know, a certain particular job that perhaps you don't even know exists as well. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next question. Leanne, I'm going to pose this question to you because I know that you deal with lots of um, this kind of thing within within your role. Um, so we've had a question through about what did people study at university and so on. And I know um, most of you mentioned, you know, your study routes into Welsh Water, but could you expand on the different types of career routes into Welsh Water that you have available? I know that, you know, things like work experience, apprentices, graduate programmes and so on. So would you be able to give a bit more detail on that, please? Yeah, sure. So um, there's sort of um, four routes. So there's the traditional, you know, apply for a job on the website, 
um, go through the application, get the interview, and 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 get the job. But for um, but there's um, also the opportunity for apprenticeships. So apprentices um, applications open every year in January. Um, there are different types of apprentices apprenticeships available, but each role will call for some specific qualifications. All roles need you to have GCSEs or equivalent in some of the core subjects at grade C or above. Um, applying for an apprenticeship program is pretty much the same as applying for one of your jobs. One of the jobs you just um, application form uh, followed by a potentially an online test or telephone interview then an assessment center so applications open in early January and then if you're successful you'd start in se September um, there's also the graduate program so uh, for the graduate program applications open in um, early October and so some of the uh, girls on the call have been through the graduate program so we'll be able to tell you a little bit more about what that involves um, essentially it's a program of work which means you have six monthly placements over a period of um, I think it's two years and you get a structured training program and you get mentoring support from members on the executive team um, to apply you need a minimum of a 2-1 degree um, ideally in a stem related degree obviously um, the applications close in uh, mid-November and then uh, similar to the apprenticeships there'll be a video interview or online test or telephone interview and then there's an assessment centre during January and then if you're successful then you start in September. If you want to do something a little bit less formal like maybe just having a week or two's work experience in Welsh Water then those are negotiated on an ad hoc basis with our uh, recruitment team. So if you if you type into Google a quick do Cymru careers um, that should um, bring up the website which is job jobs.dualcamry.com and on the bottom of that you'll get the email address which is recruitment at dualcamry.com and that recruitment team will be able to talk to you about opportunities for sort of informal working experience. Hope that's helpful. Brilliant, thank you Leanne. I've got a question in um, asking what if you feel like you took the wrong A-levels and now you may not meet the requirements for your desired uni course? Do any of our speakers have any experience of that happening to them or do they have a solution? Um, so I didn't get the grades I needed for my degree course. I'm happy to put my hand up and admit. So when I was applying um, for um, for my maths degree, um, I actually wanted to do um, um, maths, uh, pure maths at the time, uh, which when I think back now must have been absolutely crazy. But I ended up having to take a, a similar but different uh, maths and its applications course, which was... Um, less less pure and more based on um, around statistics and the application of maths in real life i'm so glad that you, some things have happened for a reason um because i'm so glad i took that course because it was much more suited to my personality um i think any if, if you if you feel like the, the a levels are not going to get you the grades you need but you're adamant on doing that course quickly have a good look around at other universities or other education suppliers to see if you can get something similar if there's really not going to be anything similar and you really don't want to be flexible on your course then if you want if you reset your a levels it is not the end of the world um i i'm looking back on a 25 year career and honestly 12 months is like a blink of an eye in the in the whole scheme of things so don't let it worry you if you're determined just find another route in Thank you for uh, your very honest answer there. So yeah, there's always options out there for you to consider. Um, so I'm going to ask, so we've talked about you know women in STEM and diversity in STEM, and I would just like to find out a bit more about what our panel think about how can we encourage more women into STEM and how can we improve diversity in STEM? So if there's anything the Welsh Water are currently working on that you want to talk to us about, that would be amazing. Um, Sarah, shall I come to you first? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, I think doing sessions like this are quite encouraging. Um, like these weren't an option when I was growing up um, and when I was looking to take STEM subjects um, and go into the career I've gone into. Um, and I would have probably liked these type of things just for the support side of it. 
um, when I was in school, um, the careers advisor was very much like you can go into nursing, teaching, um, the very female dominated industries um, were just like a standard. You'd think that that would be where people would go into. Um, so engineering was kind of pushed on me from um, mainly from my grandpa and obviously from the love of enjoying the technology side of it and being OK at maths. Um, yeah, so I think these type of sessions are great. Um, I think there's other available things out there. I think there's um, like days you can go to open days, um, different events. I think the EESW is another event where they try and get people, um, try and get schools to get involved in STEM things as well. Um, in terms of what Welsh Water offers, um, I don't in, know entirely what, what they've got available, um, but we are, I know Welsh Water has agreed um, that it's going to not necessarily employ more women because that sounds <laughs> like they're only going to employ women, um, but they're going to try and improve the diversity within their workforce. So we're looking at all um, different people, um, different backgrounds and how we be can become a more diverse company, uh, which is great and it's, it's fantastic to see it. Welsh Water and other company, companies out there doing that. Um, I'm not sure if anybody else on the panel is aware of anything Welsh Water are doing. Thank you, Sarah. So I know um, that I know I know that our HR team at the moment um, are looking to rewrite some of our job descriptions because the language we use is sometimes. Um, naturally appealing to um, male applicants. So I know that we're currently re-looking at using different wording to make sure they appeal to a wider range of people. Yeah, and then to back that as well, the images that we're using, they're more female um, dominated pictures rather than just men in high vis and PPA. So it's like sort of making that equal balance between men and women. Brilliant, thank you. Do any of our panel members know of any other sort of resources that girls can tap into around um, STEM careers at all? Anything useful that you would like to share? Um, I've already mentioned Girls at Code. That's, um, that's a great support group for women um, and girls that are interested in um you know development opportunities and there are if, if you if you google around that subject there are definitely more more uh, websites and groups that you can join and of course the advantage of covid which there's not many admittedly is that so many of the groups have moved online now that you've got a much wider breadth of things to access absolutely Thank you. Thank you for sharing all of that information with us. And um, if we, I'll just have a quick check to check if we've got any more questions. Okay, I think we'll wrap it up for the questions. But if you have any questions and you leave today thinking, oh, I really wish I asked that question, then please just drop myself an email and we can we can pass that over to the panel and answer those offline and get those answers back to you as well. So I'm just going to um, wrap things up and say a massive thank you to everybody that took part today, to our amazing speakers, to Leanne, to Sarah, to Thayamal, to Ellie and to Kilian as well. Thank you so much for giving us your time today. Um, it's just so important to share these career journeys with, with, um, with girls out there. Um, and a big thank you to everybody that joined us from home as well um, for taking time out of your half term to join us. And I hope it's been um, inspiring for you. I know that I've learned a lot from um, these five amazing women today. So I'm sure that everybody at home has as well. And if you have any further questions, as I mentioned, please just drop me an email and I can get back to you about that. We have got another Not Just For Boys event coming up. It's planned for early December. The date is to be confirmed. We're actually going to be doing an international version of Not Just For Boys, where we're going to be speaking to women working in STEM roles across uh, the world. So we have um, some from America, some from Europe as well. So it'll be amazing to hear those stories and just showcase that there's STEM careers worldwide that for you to think about. So I can't wait to share that information with you. In the meantime, if you have any questions or you want to get in touch with anything about Quartic, then here are my contact details. I'd love to hear from you as well. When the uh, webinar closes down, there will be some um, survey questions and feedback questions. So if you could just pop in your answers, that's fantastic. And, you know, we can use those to improve the webinars for, for future use. Um, yeah, so again, thank you, everybody, and have a wonderful day. It's been great talking to you. It's been great talking to our speakers as well. So enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. Bye-bye. Take care.